summation notation is commonly encountered in statistics. It's important to understand how to read summation notation and perform the operations it describes. Why do we need summation notation? Let's start with an example. Suppose we would like to add together the first 81 numbers. We could write out that summation in this manner by writing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on. When we're adding together a lot of numbers, however, this process gets to be very tedious. We can write out this summation of the first 81 numbers much more compactly using summation notation. Here we would write it as the sum of i from i equals 1 to 81, and that sum equals 3,321. Summation notation is also referred to as sigma notation because the summation operator is the uppercase Greek letter sigma. In the notation, we have a value that represents the index of summation. It takes on a starting value, and we continue incrementing the index until we get to the ending value. And what we are summing are the elements of the data. Let's look at an example of how to expand the summation notation. Here we have the sum of x sub i from i equals 1 to n. The starting value of the index is 1, therefore we start with x sub 1. Then we increment the index by 1 to get x sub 2. Now we have x1 plus x sub 2. And we continue in this fashion until we get to the ending value of the index, which in this case is n. And the last value we're adding is x sub n. Now let's look at an example with some real data. In the table on the right, you see we have five data points. The first data point is 18, the second data point is 31, and so on. We can write out the sum of these values as the sum from i equals 1 to 5 of x sub i. If we expand that notation, we start with x sub 1, and we add to it x sub 2, and we add to it x sub 3, and so on. In terms of the specific numbers of this example, what we get is 18 plus 31 plus 14 plus 23 plus 30, which equals 116. Pay close attention to the starting and ending values of the index because they don't always start at 1 and they don't always end at the last value in your data set, or the index of the last value in your data set. In this example, we see we have the sum from i equals 3 to 5 of x sub i. And that expands to x sub 3 plus x sub 4 plus x sub 5. In the context of our data, that becomes 14 plus 23 plus 30, which equals 67. Recall that in math, we have a specific order of operations. You may have learned this as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The order of operations are such that we first do parentheses, then we do exponents, Next, we do multiplication and division. And finally, we do addition and subtraction. A summation sign indicates addition. Therefore, you're going to do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division before you do the summation. Here is an example of when you have to pay attention to the order of operations. We have the sum from i equals 1 to 5 of x squared sub i. This expands to x sub 1 squared plus x sub 2 squared, plus x sub 3 squared, plus x sub 4 squared, plus x sub 5 squared. Notice that we're squaring the values first, and then we add them up. In the context of our data example, we take 18 squared, which is 324, then we square 31 to get 961, and we continue squaring each value. Once we have squared all the values, then we add them up to get 2,910. By adding parentheses to the summation notation, we actually get a different result. In this case, we are going to put the summation within the parentheses and then square the result. Here we have the sum of i equals 1 to 5 of x sub i, and that quantity is squared. Because of the parentheses, we add the elements first and then we square the result. This notation expands to x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 plus x sub 4 plus x sub 5 that sum is squared. In the context of our data example, we simply add 18 plus 31 plus 14 plus 23 plus 30 to get 116, and we square that result. 
116 squared is 13,456. Next is an example that uses both parentheses and exponents. We have the sum from i equals 1 to 2 of x sub i minus x bar quantity squared. That expands to x sub 1 minus x bar quantity squared plus x sub 2 minus x bar quantity squared. Because of the order of operations, we're going to first do the operation within the parentheses, then we're going to handle the exponent, and then we're going to do the sum. For this data example, we see that we take 18 minus 24.5, which gives us negative 6.5. We square that value to get 42.5. Then we go to the next element. We take 31 minus 24.5 and square it, and that gives us 42.25. Adding those values together, we end up with 84.5. Summation notation may also involve multiple variables. In this example, we see we have the sum of i equals 1 to n of x sub i times y sub i. Remembering the order of operations, this expands to x sub 1 times y sub 1 plus x sub 2 times y sub 2, and so on until we get to x sub n times y sub n. In the table on the right, we can see we have two variables, x and y. x has the values 18, 31, and 14. Y has the values 33, 45, and 52. Our summation notation indicates that we are going to do the sum of i equals 1 to 3 of x sub i times y sub i. This expands to x sub 1 times y sub 1 plus x sub 2 times y sub 2 plus x sub 3 times y sub 3. For our data example, that's going to be 18 times 33, which is 594, plus 31 times 45, which equals 1,395, plus 14 times 52, which is 728. Adding those values together, we get 2,717. Summation notation is commonly encountered in statistics. Two basic examples are the equation for the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. If you understand summation notation, you will be able to execute the operations correctly and obtain the proper result.